Amen. Amen. The glory of God in earthen vessels. The title of the message for today, taken primarily from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 8 through 11. And um, I like ceramics. The only really experience I had in ceramics was when I was in high school. One of the uh, extra courses that in public schools, they have a um, uh, ability to provide. And so I took the general course in ceramics in class, made a few things, brought them home. Mom put them on the shelf. That's a typical uh, result of, of that. But it was just the act of creating. It was just part of within my my spirit the way that the lord designed me i love creating we are vessels of the lord um the scripture speaks of the potter and fashioning from clay and making decisions regarding those things and we know that we are as the psalm 130 9 says we are fearfully and wonderfully made i will praise you for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well the entire psalm is is a reflection of of one uh, david as a psalmist but also as one understanding that he was made he was fashioned by the hand of god and yes, that makes us special. That makes everyone special. We're going to look at ourselves as vessels of God and understanding that we have the potential as vessels, all of us as humans, we have the potential of being the resting place, the place of, that holds the glory of God. Paul says, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. Earthen vessels, yes. It sort of has a reflection back on the, in Genesis, when Adam was created, he was created from the, the dust of the ground. That God formed him and breathed into him the breath of life, and he became a living being, a living soul. That applies to everyone, not just a believer. Now, Paul, in this context, in 2 Corinthians, he's talking about the ministry that God called him to. You see, Paul, uh, you may, may, may understand that Paul was chosen after he had chosen himself for service to God. He was a Pharisee. And a Pharisee isn't just some casual uh, occupation. It's one that involves, that requires of you tremendous and all-giving devotion. It is the Pharisees, the scribes and and those uh, people, the teachers of the law, they devoted themselves to understanding the word of God and the ways of God. And we have scripture memory. And we, would, we would study, you know, and, and read and reflect on and, uh, you know, memorize verses of the Bible. These people memorized books of the Bible. And yet he was considered... He considered himself a vessel of God. And it wasn't until his Damascus Road experience, you find that in Acts. And in that Damascus encounter with Jesus, or not Damascus, he was on his way to Damascus, in that encounter with Jesus on the road, and he didn't know who he was dealing with. And Jesus revealed himself. And it was in that 
facing of his conflict, facing of the reality of who God is and what God was doing and who Jesus was and the Messiah and the ministry and the mission of Messiah and that he found that he was warring against God. But God made transformation of him. Here, here he was thinking that he was the vessel, one of the greater vessels of God as a Pharisee with a lot of zeal for the ways of God. And God had to break him, reform him. And then he was able to write to the ministry to the Corinthians. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now he says we because he's in the context, he's talking about the apostles, the ministry of those who are ministering the word. And there was much, and you read that passage and you, you see that they endured a lot, even facing death for the sake of those who were receiving the gospel, for the sake of those receiving this treasure, the glory of God ministered through these earthen vessels, the people of God. He goes on, verse 8 through 10. We are hard pressed in every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. This is Paul speaking of himself. And again, respecting the context, it's the ministers of God. But it's rather interesting that we can understand this, this message that he was writing to the Corinthians. He was saying, we're doing this for you. We're facing death so that you would live. I'm also pulling this out. Yes, respecting the context, but also pulling it out in regard to ourselves as vessels. That at times we are hard pressed. There are many people who are feel like they're being crushed and they're perplexed. So there's confusion. There may be even despair. They're facing persecution, facing rejection. And may we always be faithful in caring, caring about, as he says, in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus. It goes along with him. Uh, Paul saying that I preach Christ and him crucified. Now, we would rather preach Christ and him resurrected. But Paul says, I carry around in the body, referring to himself, and referring to the, uh, the ministers of the gospel, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. It's not just, you know, the sad, woe is me. No, I have, I am crucified with Christ, says Galatians 2. I am crucified with Christ, and the life I live is not my own. It is Christ alive in me. To remind us, the vessels, even the vessels of God, can be broken. Now, that brokenness is in terms of what happens to this body. That brokenness is in terms of, of our ability to understand and deal with uh, problems and situations. We have to acknowledge, yes, Lord, I am limited, but you're not. Because you are not limited, and because you are alive in me, even in my brokenness, I still can say, you will. I still can say, you can, Lord. And if you choose, you can do it through me. Now, that's something that, that might seem a contradiction. If we recognize our brokenness, we recognize that we're just a vessel and the limitations of our, of our not just our body, but our mind, our, our emotions, that we are attacked 
that we are perplexed, that we can be crushed, that we can be hard pressed, and all of these things. And yet we tell God because we realize the power in us, the, the glory of God in us, that we can say yes and amen to what you're calling me to do. Yes and amen, Lord, that I will even sacrifice, that I will become inconvenienced, that I will give of myself in such a way so that your glory is shown. The people will know it's not me, but it's you. That the life of Jesus may be manifested in our body. This brokenness is understood by the world. It is understood by every human who has faced any type of issues. There are times in which this brokenness is a consequence of sin. There's drug addiction. There's brokenness in relationships. Maybe it's somebody else's sin that has created brokenness. People have experienced abuse. And it's destructive. These are all bad things. And it leads to a worse condition, which is a lack of hope. I think you might understand when I say that a broken spirit is a very bad and dark place to be for, for a person because they lack hope. They, they have no expectation beyond their suffering. There are those who look to, to um, some sort of remedy those who are facing anxiety and fear and they, they turn to alcohol or they turn to drugs. But they place their hope, their longing in, in the efforts of someone else. It could be a doctor. It could be the government. But when those things come back and show their own lack and show their own limitation, sometimes... They resign to lack of hope. That is a very bad place to be. Yes, you may be an instrument to help broken vessels. People affected by the consequences of their own sin or, or some abuse of their body, some addiction. The Lord may use you to help them that they would regain hope and point them in the direction of the source of all hope. There's another type of brokenness that I want to touch on. And that is a brokenness even among God's people. You have, I use as an illustration, the vase that is, seems to be fine except for that very thin crack. And if it's turned the right way, you don't even see it. So I wanted to illustrate that there's an inner brokenness. Not that the lost don't have it either, but there's an inner brokenness that can be hidden from our fellow believer. It can be hidden among the people of God because we want to put on this face of, we're okay, we're fine. Or maybe if something is discovered, it's like, ah, but it's all right. I bear with it. I'm all right. And for the most part, it is. You've got it under control. The part about this brokenness that I want to touch on, and I believe the Spirit wants us to hear, be reminded of, is that even those things which we think are, well, there's really nothing you can do about it, and I'm just living my life, thanking the Lord. And when those things are not turned over to God, they're not healed. They're not dealt with. 
We desire to, to be a vessel of honor. We desire to, you know, to consider that we're bearing the glory of God. And we're not allowing that glory to bring healing into our own life and situation. And there's various reasons. Sometimes it's some fear. Maybe there's some anger. There's some issues of unforgiveness. Whatever it would be. May you understand that even these things, when that are not exposed to the healing power of God, they also lead to a type of loss of hope. It's the idea that, um, Lord, I can't. I can't do that. In the reality, what we should say is, Lord, I won't. You see, that's a, that's a vessel that's broken and may look fine on the outside, but that's, that there's brokenness within that vessel, which is not healed. Lord, I can't forgive that person that which they had done to me. And it, it may have been something truly horrible. It's not to diminish the pain. It's not to diminish that which happened. But when we position ourselves in such that we will not be healed, we're telling the Lord, Lord, I can't, when in reality it is I won't. Because God has the remedy. He has the healing. And in a situation like I was just illustrating, the, the pain caused by someone else, there is forgiveness, there is healing, there is wholeness. It may take a while. So when it was hurt you, it may take, you know, to say, well, I have a hard time forgiving. But Lord, in you and in your strength, I will forgive. And it may, it may be a a process that's necessary for that healing to be complete. And after that forgiveness, there's the regaining of trust. There's understanding. There is hope. There's hope for me. There's hope for that person that did that to me. And Lord, may you put, may your healing be within me such that I pray for them, that I desire their blessing fully. That is a broken vessel that bears the glory of God. That is a broken vessel that has come before the Lord in fullness, in complete submission. Say, Lord, I'm not perfect, but you are. And I'm not looking to be made whole so that Others can look at me. I'm looking to be made whole so that they will see you. Even in my brokenness, even in everything that I lack, they will see you. They will see your glory. Again, verse 7. For we have this earthen vessel, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We have this treasure. May we treasure that which the Lord has done in us, for us. May we treasure what the Lord can do through us as well. May we submit to the Lord in all things that the glory of God is manifested in us, even through our brokenness. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Now, reading that, particularly when it's when you don't read the context of it, it sounds like you can clean yourself, all right? You can get it all together, and that you're going to be a vessel of honor. And you're going to be, you're going to be perfect in everything you do, and it's all going to be good. And a lot of praise from the Lord. 
my good and faithful servant. Yeah, he, he cleaned himself up. He got it right. That's a, uh, that's a position that I do not encourage you to adopt. In this passage, Paul is talking to Timothy, and he's um, encouraging him. And he says, this is from verse 20. In a house, there's all kinds of vessels, and there's some that are for noble use and others for common use. But if you, verse 21, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, and that latter, again, in the context is things that defile, things that are earthly or of the flesh. If you submit yourself to God and you are presenting yourself in such a way that the cleansing of God, the, the work of God is evident in your life, that's when these things are gone. That's when the cleansing happens. That's when you present yourself as a vessel of honor. And this is in the eyes of the Lord. That word sanctified essentially is connected with holiness. It's connected with being set apart. You're set apart and useful for the master. And you're prepared for every good work by the master's call, by the, by the decision of the master. Again, that's how the master wants to use you. There are vessels that were broken and were glued together. And sometimes we have this idea that that's how God works. Lord, pick up my pieces and put me back together. Okay. And that illustration, you know, it has its uses, but I prefer the idea that God takes those pieces and he crushes them, he breaks them further, and he remakes you whole again. Without the cracks and the glue, but brand new, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And what's interesting is even after that process takes place, after the complete brokenness and the reformation, the transformation of God, the world and others will still see you as that broken one. You've heard testimony of people saying, you know, I, I came to the Lord after, after going through some hardships. I came to the Lord and, and was his, and then I backslid. And then I went back to the life I once knew. But later I surrendered my life. And my family and my friends were expecting me to fall back. Those that I once knew, that I once hung up out with, that I did those, those bad and horrible things with, destroying other people's lives and destroying my own, they expected me to come back. To them. Consider that we still call Thomas the doubter. We characterize people based on their sin. God doesn't do that. If anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor. May our cleansing from the Lord be like this. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty. Again, my, my position before the Lord is not to say, oh, Lord, how can I, you know, be in par with, 
with the mighty of this world, with the wise, with the educated, with the with the uh, the famous. Oh, look at us! You know, the, the people of God. We're we're on par with those guys. We're we have just as much fame and just as much glory. There's danger in that. Because are we comparing ourselves with the world in order to compete with the world on their terms? And the Lord says, I will use the humble to shame the proud. I will call you to humble yourself that I will exalt you. And the world will still hate you. Yet that exaltation will humble them. That you present yourself to me as a broken vessel, broken of sin and reformed by me. And that vessel will present my glory to the world. That God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things that are mighty in the world. Verse 29 and 31, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That as, as it is written, he who, glora, who glories, let him glory in the Lord. They are... Um, Attentiveness and submission to God, be always, Lord, may I glory in you. Not glory in my testimony of how cleaned up I got. Not glory in, Lord, this is the wonderful thing you did for me, and now I'm all good, and look at me now, world. No. May my glory always be. You, Lord, my God, that rescued me, that transformed me. My testimony is not that great compared to someone who was in the muck and the mire. But I glory in you, the same God that rescued that one that was in the muck and the mire and was rescued from all types of horrible things. We share the same Lord. We glory in the same God. My glory is not in my transformation. My glory is in you, O oh Lord. Glory of God in earthen vessels. May we be the vessels that bear his name. That we are vessels filled with his wisdom and strength. We are vessels that carry the light of the gospel into darkness and we bear his glory because of him not because of us amen